Record. Recording. Okay. Record. Oh, Colin. Uh, <laughs> bye bye, Colin. Uh, oh, he's back. You play with our words. Sideways. Um, back sideways. Welcome back. I really missed you for those couple minutes. I like this new angle on your phone. Will it? Fair. Oh, it did. I like it. Recording now, Colin. Just so you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. The Odyssey, the Iliad, the Odysseus. What do they? What do they do? Oh yeah. Part two. Book two. Book the two. Great Gathering of Armies. Yes. And, yes. and someone. It's the boat for a lot. I'm really glad that you speak Amarat. Yeah, I'm pretty hype about it, frankly. Wait, 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 we don't have a boat. Yes, this is where they list the... Oh, the Iliad. The oh, Iliad has one L. The Iliad does have one L. It's wild. Yeah. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Two eyes, one L. Oh my god. So I'm gonna give you a recap whether you want one or not. Uh... Yes. Okay. So we're in the Trojan War. I hope we know that by now. Um, <laughs> <No stops>. <laughs> <laughs> Nine years in, and Achilles and Agamemnon, who were on the Greek side, got in mm. a fight over a girl. Mm. Um, Agamemnon took Achilles' girlfriend as payment for getting rid of his own girlfriend. Oh, um, yeah. For reasons that if you dig into it, you have to. <laughs> go like a year back in your whole life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so suffice it to say, Agamemnon took Achilles' girlfriend, and Achilles is not too happy about it. Uh, so, and to react to that, Achilles is not fighting anymore, and he's just sitting in his tent, pouting with his friend Patroclus. Um, and now Agamemnon was like, "All right, that sucks, but you know, we still have to." do the war. Um, Achilles' mom went up to Zeus to beg Zeus to help the Trojans so that the Greek soldiers will see how much they need Achilles even more, Achilles being the best of the Greeks. So at the moment, Zeus is helping the Trojans. He's about to help the Trojans uh, start to win. Um, so that's where we are at. Now, as a part of this plan, Zeus is going to send a dream to Agamemnon, and that dream is going to be Zeus saying, hey, it's me, Zeus, um, you should start fighting right now because I'm gonna help you win, but he's lying. Because he's- uh -oh. Yeah, why is Zeus, <laughs> yeah, Zeus is so cheeky. Yeah, basically he wants this to be like the biggest loss ever. So by giving the Greeks the idea that they have the gods on their side, it they'll like, they won't be so worried, basically. They'll be like, oh, we're good. Like, we have Zeus on our side. Uh, oh. The truth is, Zeus is working against them. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Dude, why are gods so bored? Truly. <laughs> 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 so, this will be much shorter than the last one because we don't have to do a big intro. There's not as much, like, stuff to get through. And also, half the chapter, we're going to skip over when we get to it. Oh, fresh. Just, is that the boat part? It's the boat part. Oh. Are we sure that we want to skip over it? I think it's pretty critical, Christina. But boats are cool. Boats Everybody are likes cool. boats and their names. I mean, just think about all the symbolisms that a boat brings into a story. You know, yeah, it's important. Me. <laughs> One of those boats were probably part of my family. That's a very good point, Colin. <laughs> I am <laughs> <laughs> we gotta learn about them. Okay. Gotta learn about them. We'll, we'll deal with the boats when we get to the boats. Let's start at the beach. That's, that's right. a fair point. The great gathering of armies. Now the great array of gods and chariot-driven men. Okay, sorry, chariot. Ugh. Let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> Good start. <laughs> now. <laughs> The great array of gods and chariot-driving men slept all night long. 
but the peaceful grip of sleep could not hold Zeus, turning it over in his mind. How to exalt Achilles? How to slaughter hordes of Achaeans pinned against their ships? As his spirit churned, at last one plan seemed best. He would send a murderous dream to Agamemnon. Calling out to the vision, Zeus winged it on. Go, murderous dream, to the fast Achaean ships, and once you reach Agamemnon's shelter, rouse him. Order him, word for word, exactly as I command. Tell Atreides to aim his long-haired Achaeans to attack at once, full force. Now he can take the broad streets of Troy. The immortal gods who hold Olympus clash no more. Hera's appeals have brought them round and all agree. Griefs are about to crush the men of Troy. So all that's a lie, like I just said, right? But he's like, mm. give Agamemnon this fake confidence. Mm. <clears throat> At that command, the dream went winging off and passing quickly along the fast trim ships made for the king and found him soon sound asleep in his tent with refreshing god sent slumber drifted around him. Hovering at his head, the vision rose like Nestor, Neleus' son, the chief Agamemnon honored most. Inspired with Nestor's voice and sent by Zeus, the dream cried out, Still asleep, Agamemnon? The son of Atreus, that skilled breaker of horses, how can you sleep all night, a man weighed down with duties? Your armies are turning over their lives to listen to your command, responsibility so heavy. Listen to me, quickly. I bring you a message sent by Zeus, a world away, but he has you in his heart. He pities you now. Zeus commands you to arm your long-haired Achaeans to attack at once full force. Now you can take the broad streets of Troy. The immortal gods who hold Olympus clash no more. Hera's appeals have brought them round and all agree. Griefs from Zeus are about to crush the men of Troy. But keep this message firmly in your mind. Remember, let no loss of memory overcome you when the sweet grip of slumber sets you free. With that, the dream departed, leaving him there, his heart racing with hopes that would not come to pass. Foreshadowing. Uh... He thought he would take the city of Priam then, that very day, the fool. The book just starts insulting Agamemnon. <laughs> oh, idiot. <laughs> Stupid Agamemnon. <laughs> but how could he know what the work the father had in mind? The father, Zeus, still bent on plaguing the Argives and Trojans, both with wounds and groans in the bloody press of battle. But rousing himself from sleep, the divine voice, vo <laughs> what is wrong with me? The divine voice swirling around him. Atreides sat up, bolt awake, pulled on a soft tunic, linen never worn, and over it, through his flaring battle cape. Under his smooth feet, he fastened supple sandals. Across his shoulder slung his silver-studded sword. Then he seized the royal scepter of his father's. Its power can never die. And grasping it tightly, off he strode to the ships of the Argives armed in bronze. There's quite a few of these scenes of just dudes putting on clothes, so get used to them. One oh, of the yeah. chapters is it completely Achilles putting on his armor. <laughs> oh, baby. This <laughs> Can't wait. On his supple chest as he drips his... What am I doing? Ooh, oh, calm my. down, Marat. Oh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh All right. Now, the goddess Dawn climbed up to Olympus Heights, declaring the light of day to Zeus and the deathless gods as the king, uh, Agamemnon, commanded heralds to cry out loud and clear and muster the long-haired Achaeans to full assembly. Their cries rang out. Battalions gathered quickly. But first he called his ranking chiefs to council beside the ship of Nestor, the warlord born in Pylos. Summoning them together there, it tried sat forth his cunning foolproof plan. Okay, uh, Marat, you never got a chance to read. Do you want to be like a man mm. one today? Oh, word. Is like a man on? Okay, okay. He's a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that a <laughs> is this is this like a man on? Yes, go on. Right, hear me, friends. <laughs> a dream sent by the gods has come to me in sleep. Down through the racing gods at night and gate. Oh, like a good Nestor in features, height and build. The old king himself, and hovering at my head, the dream called me on. Still asleep, Agamemnon, the son of Atreus, that skilled breaker of horses. How can you sleep all night, a man weighed down with duties? Your army is turning over the lives to your command. 
responsibility, Sileri. Listen to me, quickly. I bring you a message sent by Zeus, a world away, but he has you in his heart. He pities you now. Zeus commands you to arm your long-haired Achaeans, 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 to attack at once, full force. Now you can take the broad streets of Troy. The immortal gods who hold Olympus clash no more. Hera's appeals have brought them round and all agree. Greece from Zeus are about to crush the men of Troy. But keep this message firmly in your mind. What? With that, the dream, the dream went winging off and soothing sleep released me. Oh, okay. Come, see if we can arm the Achaeans for assault. But first, according to time honored custom, I will test the men with a challenge. Tell them all the crowd, the, to crowd the oarlocks. Cut and run in their ships, but you take up your battle stations at every point. Command them and hold them back. All right, so Agamemnon, in case we needed another reason to not like him. <laughs> weird, bro. Yeah, he um, repeats the dream for the third time. We get this dream in just two pages. And then mm -hmm. he goes, great, so we can take the Troy. We're going to do mm -hmm. that right away. Super exciting. But first, I'm going to test these armies that have been here for nine years by telling them, time to go, we can go home now, da da da, and I'm gonna see, you know, I'm gonna test their valor and whatever. Mm -hmm. This time-honored custom. Mm -hmm. So what's supposed to happen is that the Greeks are like, no way, we're not gonna go home, we're gonna take Troy right now, mm -hmm. yeah! But morale is not very high. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. The book makes fun of him again by saying, so much mm -hmm. for his plan. <laughs> Got him. Got <laughs> wrecked. <laughs> Looks like some postmodern business, like the book versus their characters is pretty awesome. Yeah. Like, well, what an idiot. <laughs> like, it is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Agamemnon took his seat, and Nestor rose among them. Noble Nestor, king of the Pylos Sandy Harbor spoke and urged them on with all goodwill. All right, who would like to be Nestor, the old man? I'll be Nestor, the old man. Okay. And, uh, get nested. Friends, Lord of the uh, Gibbies? Argives. Argives. Oh, my captains, if the other Achaeans had told us of this dream, we'd call it false and turn our backs upon it. But look, the man who saw it has every claim to be the best of the bravest Achaean we can field. Come, see if we can arm the Achaeans for assault. Yeah, so Nestor is on Agamemnon's side. They're like bros. Um, and he calls Agamemnon the best of the Greeks. We know that that's Achilles and uh, not sitting too well with the Achilles fans in the audience, but that's okay. Uh, I was gonna say. <laughs> boo, boo, Nestor, boo. Nestor. Uh, he's all right. He's cool. Um, Oh, he's cool. This chapter, this chapter kind of establishes the two, um, like, secondary main characters in, mm. on the Greek side, because we have Achilles and Agamemnon, and now we're going to get to know Nestor and Odysseus, who mm. cool because he's the main character of the Odyssey, which is named after him, Odysseus. Oh, oh. Yeah. All right. So Nestor, he's like, I love Agamemnon. Um, and out he marched, leading the way from council. The rest sprang to their feet. The sceptered kings obeyed the great field marshal. Rank and file streamed behind and rushed like swarms of bees pouring out of a rocky hollow, burst on endless burst, bunched and clustered, clusters seeking over the first spring blooms, dark hordes swirling into the air, this way, that way. So the many armed platoons from the ships and tents came marching on close file along the deep wide beach to crowd the meeting grounds and rumor zeus's crier like wildfire wildfire blazing among them whipped them on the troops assembled the meeting grounds shook the earth groaned and rumbled under the huge weight as soldiers took positions the whole place in uproar nine heralds shouted out trying to keep some order Quiet, battalion, silence, hear your royal kings. The men were forced to their seats, marshaled into ranks. The shouting died away. Silence. Oh, yeah. King Agamemnon rose to his feet, raising high in hand the scepter Hephaestus made with all his strength and skill. 
Festus gave it to Cronus' his son, Father Zeus, and Zeus gave it to Hermes, the giant killing guide, and Hermes gave it to Pelops, the fine charioteer, Pelops gave it to Atreus, marshal of fighting men, who died and passed it on to Theseus, which in flocks, and he in turn bestowed it on to Agamemnon to bear on high. <laughs> As you know, the islands and the mainland Argos. Just so you know, that's where his scepter came from. Oh. Were curious. <laughs> oh, Good to okay. know. <laughs> Good to know. See, I'm glad they really plotted it. I was kind of curious, but yeah, now yeah. I understand. Like, where that? Like, where did he get his scepter? I, I was so curious. Like, how does a man get a scepter? Like, <laughs> it's not like a one day around everywhere, you know. No, no, no. Scepters are rare. Okay, but now, leaning his weight upon that kingly scepter, it tries to declare his will to all Achaea's armies. Marat, that's you. Oh. Friends fighting the nons. Did you say that? <laughs> Danae, but it's cool. Danae? Yeah. Can we just all agree that's not how you spell the name? <laughs> Aids in arms of Ares, Cronus' son has trapped me in the madness, blinding ruin. Zeus is, har Zeus is harsh, cruel god, is a harsh, cruel god. He vowed to me long ago. He bowed his head that I should never embark for home till I had brought the walls of Ilium crashing down. But now I see he only plotted brutal treachery. Now he commands me back to Argos in disgrace. Whole regiments of my men destroyed in battle. So it must please his overweening heart. Who knows? Father Zeus has lopped. <laughs> lopped? <laughs> lopped? What does that mean? Um, kind of like... Chopped off, flung <laughs> off. Oh, <laughs> lopped. <laughs> Father Zeus has lopped the crowns of a thousand cities. True, and Zeus will lop some more. <laughs> <laughs> verb in the English language. Oh my god, lop. <laughs> His power is too great. What humiliation. Even for generations still to come. To learn that Achaean, Achaean army is so strong, so vast, fought a futile war. We are still fighting it. No end in sight, and battling forces we outnumber, by far. Say that Trojans and Argives both agreed to swear a truce, to seal their oaths in blood, and opposing sides were tallied out in full. Count one by one the Trojans who live in Troy, but count our Achaeans out by ten men squads, and each squad pick a Trojan to pour his wine. Any, many Achaean tens would lack their steward then. Oh. That's how far we outnumber them. I'd say Achaeans to Trojans, the men who hail from Troy at least. But they have allies called from countless cities. Fighters brandishing spears who block my way who throw me far off course, thwarting my will to plunder Ilium's rugged walls. All right, and so nine... long. I'm going to let you stop for a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very good job. So Thanks. if we remember, Agamemnon is trying to fool everybody. So he's being like, we're so outnumbered. Zeus is against us. We've been oh. fighting for so long. It's like embarrassing. Let's just go home. And he's trying. Mm. he's actually mm. saying it very like convincingly. Um, mm. And all of this is true. He doesn't think Zeus mm. is against him, but he is. Um, mm. So he's just like, this is silly. Like, let's just leave. And he's expecting everyone to be like, no, we don't want to go. Oh, through. he's trying to bait it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> negging the Achaeans. <laughs> negging his entire Achaean yeah. army. Basically. He's like, oh, gee, guys. Oh, wouldn't be so. <laughs> okay. Should I keep going? Yeah, go ahead. In nine years of almighty Zeus have marched by, our ship timbers rot and the cables snap and fray, and across the sea our wives and helpless children wait in the halls, wait for our return, and we? Our work drags on, unfinished as always, hopeless. The labor of war that brought us here to Troy. So come, follow my orders. All obey me now. Cut and run, sail home to fatherland we love. We'll take the broad streets of Troy. We'll never take the broad streets of Troy. We'll never take the broad, we will never take the broad streets of Troy. <laughs> we'll never do it. Good job, yeah. So. <laughs> the most critical part. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, okay, what? <laughs> All right. So, yes, we will never take the broad through street. <laughs> Testing is men. <laughs> Testing is men, but he only made the spirit race inside their chests. All the rank and file who'd never heard his plan. And the whole assembly surged like big waves at sea, the Icarian Sea, when east and south winds drive it on, blasting down in force from the clouds of Father Zeus, or when the west wind shakes the deep standing grain with hurricane gusts that flatten down the stalks, so the mass assembly of troops was shaken now. Okay, so there wasn't too many of these in the first book. Homer loves these super extended similes and metaphors. Why not, yes. Yeah, so he's going to be like, like how the sea blows in the wind on a Tuesday in summer. <laughs> All the armies flew in the wind. It's just like really. It's like, can you relate? <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of them and they start ramping up in intensity, especially when we get into the actual battle. Um, oh my God. I'm actually kind of with that. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat, but they do get long and you can kind of lose yourself in them because you're like, wait, why are we talking about bees? Like, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> why are we talking about bees? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, the, the troops are shaken like the sea in a storm is what he's trying to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have like the Iliad translated, it'd be like 10 pages, <laughs> minus the similes. Right. <laughs> They cried in alarm, ah, and charged toward the ship. <laughs> and the dust was whirling up from under Russia. <laughs> you, you like that one? <laughs> A whole army, ah! <laughs> Go on, sorry, sorry. Okay. And the dust went whirling up from under rushing feet as the men jostled back and forth, shouting orders, grapple the ships, drag them down to the bright sea, clean out the launching channels. Shrill shouts hitting the heavens, fighters racing for home, knocking the blocks out underneath the hulls. And now they might have won their journey home, the men of Argos fighting the will of fate. Yes, if Hera had not alerted Athena. Inconceivable! Child of Zeus, whose battle shield is thunder, tireless one, Athena. What, is this the way? All the Argives flying home to their fatherland, sailing over the sea's broad back? leaving Priam and all the men of Troy a trophy to glory over, Helen of Argos. Helen, for whom so many Argives lost their lives in Troy, far from native land. So Hera's like, what, are they giving up? Like, what? Yeah, like, what's going on? No. Go, range the ranks of the Achaeans armed in bronze. With your winning words, hold back each man you find. Don't let them haul their rolling ships to sea. The bright-eyed goddess Pallas lost no time. Um, Athena is sometimes called Pallas Athena, by the way. Um, mm. Sometimes just Pallas, whatever. She has two names. Pallas? Yeah. Oh, I've seen that before. Yeah, that's Athena? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. She's Pallas Athena. Apollo is sometimes Phoebus Apollo. Phoebus. Phoebus means sun god. Means sun god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Phoebus, the sun god. <laughs> Phoebus, I'm sorry. Um, bright-eyed goddess Pallas lost no time. Down she flashed from the peaks of Mount Olympus, quickly reached the ships and found Odysseus first, a mastermind like Zeus. Still My standing boy! Back. Oh, yeah. My he boy. had not laid a hand on his black-benched hull. Such anguish racked his heart and fighting spirit. Now close beside him, the bright-eyed goddess stood and urged him on. Royal son of Laertes. Tie into Hamlet? <laughs> Oh wait, is Ophelia Odysseus's sister? Whoa! No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Anyway, royal son of Lear, <laughs> Odysseus, great tactician. What is this the way? All you Argives flying home to your fatherland, tumbling into your oar-swept ships, leaving Priam and all the men of Troy a trophy to glory over. Okay, so like everyone repeating Zeus's dream, uh, Athena is just repeating exactly what Hera told her. But oh. again, this was supposed to be performed out loud, so it's like a memory tactic and a chorus, and there's a lot of like dense repetition, like whole paragraphs repeated. 
Oh. I love you. So um, lovely. Leaving Troy, a trophy to glory over, Helen of Argos, Helen for whom so many Argives lost their lives in Troy, far from native land? No, don't give up now. Range the Achaean ranks with your winning words. Hold back each man you find. Don't let them haul their rolling ships to sea. Odysseus mm. knew the goddess's voice. He went on the run, flinging off his cape as Eurybates picked it up. The herald of Ithaca, always at his side. Coming face to face with Atreides Agamemnon, he relieved him of his father's royal scepter. The scepter we learned about for like a whole paragraph. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it's power. Really? Relieved his scepter. Oh. Grasping it tightly, off he strode to the ships of Argives armed in bronze. Whenever Odysseus met some man of rank, a king, he'd halt and hold him back with winning words. By calling, you're Odysseus. Whenever Odysseus met some man of rank, a king, he'd halt and hold him back with winning words. Whenever Odysseus <laughs> met some man of rank, a king, he'd halt and hold him back with winning words. My friend. Yes. <laughs> it's wrong to threaten you like a coward, but you stand fast. You keep your men in check. It's too soon to see Agamemnon's purpose, clearly. Now he's only testing us. Mm -hmm. Soon he'll bear down hard. Didn't we all hear his plan in secret council? God forbid his anger destroy the army he commands. The rage of kings is strong. They're nursed by the gods. Their honor comes from Zeus. They're dear to Zeus, the god who rules the world. I like so this he really knows. Yeah, he's very smart. He knows. It's like Agamemnon's fooling us. Agamemnon's bizoned. When he caught with some common soldier shouting out, He'd beat him with the scepter. Dress him down. You fool! Sit still. Obey the command of others. Your superiors. You, you deserter, rank coward. You count for nothing. Neither in war nor council. How can all Achaeans be masters here in Troy? Too many kings can ruin an army. Mob rule. <laughs> Let there be one commander. One master only, endowed by the son of crooked-minded Cronus with kingly scepter and royal rights of custom. Whatever one man needs to lead his people well. So he ranged the ranks, commanding men to order, and back again they surged from ships and shelters, back to the meeting grounds with a deep pounding din, thundering out as battle lines of breakers crash and drag along some endless beach and the rough sea roars. The armies took their seats, marshaled into ranks, but one man, their Cedes, still railed on, nonstop. His head was full of obscenities, teeming with rant, all for no good reason, insubordinate, baiting the kings. Anything to provoke some laughter from the troops. Here was the ugliest man who ever came to Troy. <laughs> bandy leg was. Oh <laughs> <laughs> with one foot clubbed, both shoulders humped together, <laughs> curving over his caved-in chest, and bobbing above them, his skull warped to a point, sprouting clumps of scraggly, woolly hair. Oh my god. Poor yeah. cities. Oh my Getting god. wrecked in print for all eternity. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being one of the most, like, one of the most known Dude, stories. Dude, imagine if you were through cities home. and you just got, like, lied to and they were like, we're all going home and then you try to go home and then you get roasted for the rest of all classical literature. Honestly, for the rest of literary history, this man will be roasted. <laughs> oh, man. Or their cities. Achilles despised him most. Oh, did he have to do? <laughs> everyone hates him. <laughs> He's ugly. Like, and all the good characters that you like, hate him. Oh my god. <laughs> He's ugly. Everybody hates him. He's a stupid idiot. Stupid idiot. <laughs> Amazing. 
He was always abusing both chiefs, but now he went for majestic Agamemnon. Hollering out, taunting the kings with strings of cutting insults, the Achaeans were furious with him, deeply offended, but still he kept shouting at Agamemnon, spewing his abuse. All right, who wants to be their CDs? <laughs> <laughs> Who had the most hateful voice? I believe in you, Murad. I think you can give Thersides the, the right voice that he deserves. Does he go like, <laughs> Yeah. Still learning, learning. My TA Trades, why now? <laughs> why are you, what are you panting after now? <laughs> your shelter's packed with the lion's share of bronze. Plenty of women to eat. Crowding your lodges. Best of the lot, the beauties, we hand you first. Whenever we take some stronghold, or still more gold, you warn you. With wanting more ransom, a son of the stallion breaking Trojans might just fetch from Troy. Though I or another hero drags him back in chains. Or a young woman, is it to spread and couple to bed down yourself apart from all the troops? How shameful for you, the high and mighty commander, to lead the sons of Achaea into bloody slaughter. Sons? No, my sovereigns. Wretched excuses. Women, not men of Achaea. Home we go in our ships. Abandon him here in Troy to wallow in all his prizes. He'll see the likes of us have propped them up or not. Look. And now it's Achilles, a greater many disgraces, seizes and keeps his prize, tears her away himself, uh, but no gall in Achilles. Achilles lets it go. If not Atreides, ah, uh, that outrage would have been your last. Very oh good. my god, I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ugly and everyone hates me. <laughs> um, very nice. So this this speech is kind of a reflection of. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whoops. It's a reflection of Achilles in book one. So it's kind of like the same gripes that Achilles had with Agamemnon, like whatever. Mm. And like, uh, what's his name? Thersides is kind of on Achilles' side. Like he took his girl, like whatever. But Achilles let it go. Mwah. He didn't like really let it go. It's like still. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He's still very much not letting it go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, though, so Thersides taunted the famous field marshal, but Odysseus stepped in quickly, faced him down with a dark glance and threats to break his nerve. What a flood of abuse, Thersides, even for you, fluent and flowing as you are. <laughs> Keep quiet. <laughs> Who are you to wrangle with kings? You alone? No one, I say. No one alive less soldierly than you. None in the ranks that came to Troy with Agamemnon. So stop your babbling, mouthing the names of kings, flinging indecency in your teeth, your eyes peeled for a chance to cut and run for home. We can have no idea, no clear idea at all, how the long campaign will end whether Achaea's sons will make it home unharmed or slink back in disgrace. But there you sit, hurling abuse at the son of Atreus, Agamemnon, marshal of armies, simply because our fighters give Atreides the lion's share of all our plunder, you and your ranting slander. You're the outrage. I tell you this, so help me, it's the truth. If I catch you again, Blethering on this way, let Odysseus's head be wrenched off his shoulders. Never again call me the father of Telemachus if I don't grab you, strip the clothing off you, cloak, tunic, and rags that wrap your private parts, and whip you howling naked back to the fast ships, out the army's muster. Whip you like a cur! Jesus. And he cracked the scepter across his back and shoulders. The rascal doubled over, tears streaking his face, and a bloody welt bulged up between his blades. Under the stroke of the golden scepter's studs, he squatted low, cringing, stunned with pain, blinking like some idiot, rubbing his tears off dumbly with a fist. <laughs> Their morale was low, but the men laughed now. 
good, hearty laughter breaking over their city's head. Glancing at neighbors, they would shout, a terrific stroke, a thousand terrific strokes he's carried off. Odysseus, taking the lead in tactics, mapping battle plans. But here's the best thing yet he's done for the men. He's put a stop to this babbling, foul-mouthed fool. Never again, I'd say, will our gallant comrade risk his skin to attack the king with insults. Oh my god. <laughs> Literally oh, everybody roasting their cities. Homer <laughs> hated this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the soldiers bantered, but not Odysseus. The Raider of Cities, that's his um, title, the Raider of Cities, stood oh. there, scepter in hand, and close behind him, the great gray-eyed Athena rose like, a, rose like a herald, ordering men to silence. All, from the first to lowest ranks of Achaea's troops, should hear his words and mark his counsel well for the good of all he urged them. Who do you see it? Agamemnon. Now, my king, the Achaeans are bent on making you a disgrace in the eyes of every man alive. Yes, they failed to fulfill their promise sworn that day they sailed here from the stallion land of Argos that not until you had raised the rugged walls of Troy would they sail home again. But look at them now, like green, defenseless boys, or widowed men whimpering to each other. Women. Whimper. <laughs> widowed women whimpering to each other, wailing to journey back. True, they've labored long. They're desperate for home. Any fighter cut off from his wife for one month would chafe at the benches, moaning in his ship, pinned down by gales and heavy raging seas. A month. But look at us. This is the ninth year come round. The ninth we've hung on here. Who could blame the Achaeans for chafing, bridling beside the beak ships? Ah, but still, what a humiliation it would be to hold out for so long and sail home empty-handed? Courage, my friends. Hold out a little longer till we see if Calchas divined the truth or not. We all recall that moment. Who could forget it? We were all witness then. All, at least, the deadly spirits have not dragged away. Why, it seems like only yesterday or the day before that, went, that our vast armada gathered, moored at Aulius, frightened with frightened with slaughter bound for Priam's Troy. We were all busy then milling around the spring and offering victims up on the holy altars, full sacrifice to the gods to guarantee success, under a spreading plane tree where the water splashed, glittering in the sun, when a great omen appeared, a snake and his beak streaked red with blood, a thing of terror, Olympian Zeus himself had launched him into the clean light of day. He slid from under the altar, gliding up the tree, and there the brood of a sparrow, helpless young ones, teetered high on the topmost branch tips, cowering under the leaves there. Eight they were all told, and the mother made the ninth. She'd borne them all, chirping to break the heart, but the snake gulped them down and the mother cried out for her babies, fluttering over him. He coiled, struck, fanged her wing, a high, thin shriek. But once he'd swallowed down the sparrow with her brood, the son of crooked Kronos, who sent the serpent forth, turned him into a sign, a monument clear to see. Zeus struck him to stone, and we stood by, amazed that such a marvel came to light. So then, when those terrible monstrous omens burst in on the victims we were offering to the gods, Calchas swiftly revealed the will of Zeus. Why struck down now, my long-haired Achaeans? Zeus, who rules the world, has shown us an awesome sign, an event long in the future, late to come to birth, but the fame of that great work will never die. As the snake devoured the sparrow with her brood, Eight and the mother the ninth, she'd borne them all. So we will fight in Troy that many years and then, then the tenth will take her broad streets. 
So that day the prophet revealed the future. And now look by God at all comes to pass. Up with you. All you Argives geared for combat, stand your ground right here until we take the mighty walls of Priam. Ooh, good job. Okay. Yeah, um, solid. So that one, I think that's pretty clear, but um, so they saw this omen the day before they left uh, for Troy, and it was, there was a sparrow with eight babies. The snake ate all of them, and then Zeus turned it to stone. So Calchas, mm -hmm. the guy who does all the prophecies, um, mm -hmm. You know, he was like, all right, cool. Well, you're going to win in the 10th year with Zeus's help. Mm. So we're in year nine. So we're mm. almost there. We're almost going to win. So just mm. hold out. Like we're almost, you know, just chill. Like one more almost year. Yeah. <clears throat> so Odysseus fired them. So the armies roared and the ships resounded round them, shattering echoes ringing from their shouts as the Argives cried assent to King Odysseus's words. And Nestor. The noble horsemen spurred them more. What disgrace. Look at you carrying on in the armies mustered just like boys. Fools. Not a thought in your head for the works of battle. What becomes of them now? The pacts and oaths we swore. In the flames with councils, all the plans of men, the vows sealed with the strong unmixed wine, the firm clasp of the right hand we trusted. We battled on in words, as always, mere words. What And what's the cure? We cannot find a thing, no matter how many years we wrangle here. Agamemnon. Never, uh, never swerve. Hold to your first plan of action. Lead your armies headlong into war. The rest of them, let them rot. The one or two who hatch their plans part from all the troops. What good can they win from that? Nothing at all. Why, they'd scuttle home before they could learn if the vows of Zeus with his dark, cloudy shield are false or not. Zeus, the son of almighty Cronus, I remind you, bowed his head that the day uh, we boarded ships, all the Argives laden with blood and death of Troy, or death for Troy, uh, his lightning bolt on the bright good omens blazing forth. So now let no men hurry to sail for home, not yet. Not till the bed's down with... A faithful tro not till he beds down with a faithful Trojan wife. Payment in full for the groans and shocks of war we have all borne for Helen. But any soldiers wild with desire reach uh, to reach his home at once. Just let him lay a hand on his black bench ship and right in front of the rest he'll reach his death. By you, my king, be on your guard yourself. Come listen well to another man. Here's some advice, not to be tossed aside, and I will tell it clearly. Rage your men by tr tribes? Yep. Okay. Even by clans, Agamemnon. So clans fight by the side of clan, tribe by tribe. Uh, fight this way. If the Argives get, still obey you, then you can see which captain is a coward, uh, which contingent to, and which is loyal, brave, since they will fight in separate formations of their own. Then, what's more, if you fail to sack the city, you will know it will it. Uh, you will know if the will of the of gods to blame, or the cowardice of your own men inept in battle. Good job. Okay, so Nestor, also very smart, very good with the words, um, mm -hmm. says, "No one should go home. Wait for your reward of a Trojan wife." Mm -mm -mm. Better, but. His big piece of advice is, all right, Agamemnon, instead of just like charging forth, you should arrange your, the whole big, you know, Greek army, everyone should go in, gather together in their little tribes. So like Odysseus um, has the men from Ithaca, like they're all little kings of their own little zones. So like keep them together. So that way you can see which men are faithful, which men are fighting hard and which men are like cowards and holding back. So like everyone will have more accountability, which is kind of a cool idea. Um, mm. And they'll be right next to their buddies. So like they'll have friends and like, you know, spur each other on and um, better for morale, basically. So Nestor knows what's up. He's been around the block mm -hmm. a few times. Oh, oh, the unmixed wine. So the Greeks mm. watered down their wine mm. um, and I believe like they drank it as water, like it's almost like a purification process. So yeah, yeah to like get drunk, it was like what they drank. Um, mm -hmm. 
So unmixed wine is like barbaric, you know, it's like not <laughs> Yeah, like mm. not, why would you do that? What do you why want would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it tasted like crap too. It was like really unrefined probably. Yeah. Yeah, literally just hard alcohol. So yeah, straight up. Just hard alcohol, dead yeast. Just watered down. Yeah. <laughs> Rhyme. But that's what they were into, whatever. Yeah, I mean can't blame you. <laughs> All right, so King Agamemnon took his lead, saluting. Again, old man, you outfight the Argives in battle. No debate. <laughs> no. Father Zeus, Athena, Apollo, if only I had ten men like Nestor to plan with me among Achaea's armies, then we could topple Priam's, Priam's citadel in a day, throttle in our hands and gut Troy to nothing. But Cronus's son, Zeus, with his shield of storm, insists on embroiling me in painful struggles. Futile words or words. <laughs> he says, I'm dumb. <laughs> Imagine I and Achilles wrangling over a girl, battling man to man. And I, I was the first to let my anger flare. And if the two of us ever could ever, if two of us could ever think as one, Troy could delay her day of death no longer. Not one moment. Go on out, take your meal, the sooner to bring a war. Quickly, let each fighter sharpen his spear well, balance his shield well. Feed his horse as well, with plenty of grain to build their racing speed. Each man look well onto his chariot running, chariot's running order. Nerve himself for combat now, so all day long we can last out the grueling duel of, duels of Ares. No breathing space, no let up, not a moment, not till the night comes on to part with the fighter's fury. Now sweat will soak the shield straps round your chest. Your fist gripping the spear with it will ache with tensing. Now the lather, 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 lather will drench your war team's flanks, hauling your sturdy chariot. But any man I catch trying to skulk behind his long beak chips, hanging back from battle, he is finished. No way for him to escape the dogs and birds. Right, so the important bit of this, um, Agamemnon's just agreeing. He's like, yeah, let's do it, yeah. But also, he's like, gosh, so like... <laughs> anyone that tries to run away, this is me. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, but then, you know, it's too bad that Achilles and I can't get together, be, can't get along, because if we could, we could take down Troy right away. But it's oh. his fault that they're not getting along. <laughs> it's and he's not doing anything to make it better. Yeah. It's not like he's even saying sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. Agamemnon, man. The worst. Stupid Agamemnon. Stupid Agamemnon. <laughs> okay, so so he commanded, and the armies gave a deep, resounding roar, like waves crashing against a, sh a cliff when the south wind whips it bearing down some craggy headland jutting out to sea. The waves will never leave it in peace, thrashed by gales that hit from every quarter, breakers left and right. The troops sprang up, scattered back to the ships, lit fires beside their tents and took their meal, each sacrifice to one or another deathless god, each man praying to flee death in the grind of war. Okay, so they sac <laughs> the sacrifice took a long time too, uh, but whatever. The Lord of Men Agamemnon sacrificed a rich, a fat, rich ox, five years oh, old, yeah. to the son of mighty Cronos, Zeus, and called the chiefs of all the Argive forces. Nestor, first and foremost, then King Idomeneus, the great and little Ajax, Tydeus' son, Diomedes, and Odysseus, sixth, a mastermind like Zeus. The lord of the war cry, Menelaus, came uncalled. He knew at heart what weighed his brother down. They stood in a ring among the, around the ox, took up barley, and then raising among, ugh, rising among them, King Agamemnon raised his voice in prayer. Zeus. <laughs> Zeus? God of greatness, God of glory, Lord God of the dark clouds who lives in the bright sky. Don't let the sun go down or the night descend on us. Not till I hurl the smoke black halls of Priam headlong, torch his gates to blazing rubble, rip the tunic of Hector and slash his heroic chest to ribbons with my bronze and a struck of comrades around him. Groveling, graveling, groveling, graveling, groveling, groveling face down, gnaw their own earth. Yes, so Eat dirt. let the day end until <laughs> taken Troy and ripped off Hector's tunic. 
Hector is a Trojan. He's awesome. Yeah. We're gonna meet him Hector's soon. Hector's the boy, bro. He's a boy. Yeah, Hector's the, the boy. best boy. Hector is the best boy. Everyone loves Hector. Yeah, bro. In the movie, he was great. King too. of the Turks. Yeah. Was he? No. <laughs> <laughs> Got me all excited for a second. Like, damn, we were finding the cool guy more once. He, he never a- saw him with the barbaric assholes. He was the prince of the Trojans who were in what is now Turkey. Oh, hell yeah, baby. We got your and horse. And bad boys. <laughs> you got your horse. What you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna find do? Out. We'll find out what the Greeks yeah. did. Did yeah. their horses like now like a weird, oh, sorry, museum in the middle of nowhere? Can't wait okay. to see. No. It's and not very know. nice. I'd like to see it. Huh? I'd see it. The thing is, like, it sounds more awesome, but when you go there, it's like, how tall is it? It's like a two-story building tall and really skinny. It's cool, don't get me wrong. I walked in it, but, like, it's so clear the story is nonsense because you can fit, like, maybe 10 people in there. Like, you could not take over a city. Well, it was wooden. Like, it's obviously a reconstruction. It's not the same horse. Yeah, like, that's... I, I wish they made a giant, you know? Like, it would be lit. <laughs> Screw history, just make it as big as you can. <laughs> make it gigantic. Then I'd be into it. I want it so big that it just like steps over the walls of the city as opposed Honestly, to... Honestly. Yeah. I want it to be the city, you know, that's how I just want it huge. City God damn. City horse, bro. Alright, back, 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 back to the Greeks. And so, so Agamemnon prayed for a city of horse. <laughs> but- <laughs> The son of Kronos would not bring his prayer to pass. Not yet. (laughs) Zeus accepted the sacrifices, true, but doubled the weight of thankless, ruthless war. Zeus is not a very nice person sometimes. He accepts all of these sacrifices. Mm. He's like, "Mm, yes, great, mutton, Mm. yum. But like, Mm. (laughs) doesn't matter. Yeah, he's like, whatever, I'm still going to attack you. Oh, right. wait, wait, wait. so when people sacrifice things to Zeus, like sheep, yeah, does Zeus eat the sheep? Is that what that's about? They, they go up there. I think in the last yeah. chapter, actually, they like enjoyed the sacrifices. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, so unless we sacrifice things, gods are just there like really hungry, just waiting? Well, I don't know if they eat them or because if they just like accept them. I don't actually know. Um, because they eat ambrosia and nectar. Hey. They eat very special things. Um, oh, I see their booge. I think they just kind of like are like, mm, yeah, it's like they just like take it. Mm, yes. Yeah, <laughs> just appreciate that. Yeah. Ooh, love me some man. Ooh. <laughs> Not to eat, just to have. Just to have. Ooh, this is nice mutton. Uh, I mean, the whole thing kind of makes sense. If if gods are just up there waiting, hungry as hell until someone makes a sacrifice, I understand why they're so pissy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'd be a bit hangry too, you know. Right? For sure. Bro, just got to think about his protein. (laughs) All right, so got the sacrifices, doesn't care. Once the men had prayed and flung the barley, first they lifted back the heads of the victims, the sacrifices slit their throats, skinned them, and carved away the meat from the thigh bones and wrapped them in fat. A double fold sliced clean and topped with strips of flesh, and they burned these on a cleft cleft stick, peeled and dry. Spitted the vitals, held them over Hephaestus' flames, and once they charred the thighs and tasted the organs, they cut the rest into pieces, pierced them with spits, roasted them to a turn, and pulled them off the fire. The work done, the feast laid out, they ate well, and no man's hunger lacked a share of the banquet. When they had put aside desire for food and drink, Nestor, the noble old horseman, spoke out first. Marshal Atreides, lord of men Agamemnon, no more trading speeches now, no more delay. Putting off the work the gods put in our hands. Come, let the heralds cry out to all contingents. Full battle armor, muster the men along the ships. Now down we go, united, review them as we pass. Down through the vast encampments of... uh, Achaea, fast to rouse the slashing god of war. Great. Agamemnon, a lord of men, did not resist. He commanded heralds to cry out loud and clear and summon the long-haired Achaean troops to battle. 
their cries rang out. The battalions gathered quickly. The warlords, dear to the gods and the flanking Agamemnon, strode on ahead, marshalling men-at-arms in files, and down their ranks the fiery-eyed Athena bore her awesome shield of storm. <laughs> Ageless, deathless, a hundred golden tassels, all of them braided tight, and each what worth a hundred oxen flowed along the front. Her shield of lightning, dazzling, swirling around her, headlong on, Athena swept through the Argive armies, driving soldiers harder, lashing the fighting fury in each Achaean's heart, no stopping them now, mad for war and struggle. Now, suddenly, battle thrilled them more than the journey home, than sailing hollow ships to their dear native land. So we get to see the effect of the gods, specifically um, Athena in this moment, like they were yeah. ten minutes ago, ready to go home, like dying yeah. to go home. But well, Athena, then Athena shows up. Time for war, and they're like, "Yes, war!" Yes, yeah, let's, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Athena's like a pile of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> As ravening fire rips through big strands of timber high on a mountain ridge, and the blaze flares miles away. So from the marching troops, the blaze of bronze armor, splendid and superhuman, flared across the earth, flashing into the air to hit the skies. Armies gathering now as the huge flocks on flocks of winged birds, geese or cranes, or swans, with their long lancing necks, circling Asian marshes round the caster outflow, wheeling in all directions, glorying in their wings, keep on landing, advancing, wave on shrieking wave, and the tidal flats resound. So, tribe on tribe, pouring out of the ships and shelters, marched along the Scamander Plain, and the earth shook. Tremendous thunder from under trampling men and horses, drawing into position down the Scamander Meadow Flats, breaking into flower, men by the thousands, numberless, as the leaves and spears that flower forth in spring. The armies massing, crowding thick and fast, as the swarms of flies seething over the shepherd's stalls in the first spring days when the buckets flood with milk, so many long-haired Achaeans swarmed across the plain to confront the Trojans, fired to smash their lines. The armies grouping now, as seasoned goat herds split their wide-ranging flocks into packs with ease when herds have mixed together down the pasture, so the captains formed their tight platoons, detaching right and left, moving up for action. And there in the midst strode powerful Agamemnon, eyes and head like Zeus, who loves the lightning, great in the girth like Ares, god of battles, broad through the chest like the sea lord Poseidon, like a bull rising head and shoulders over the herds, a royal bull rearing over his flocks of driven cattle. So imposing was Atreus' son, so Zeus made him that day, towering over fighters, looming over armies. And we've reached the list of ships. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. All right. I'm going to give you the most important details. Oh. It's going to be a quick skip, though, because the next, like, 15 pages is a list. I'm pro-skipping. If okay. there's something really sick, I'd like to know, though. All right. I'm going to tell you the sick stuff. So it starts. Sing to me now, you muses. <laughs> who hold the halls of Olympus. This is like the narrator asking the muses to help him because he has to say so many names. <laughs> it's like, yo, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can someone be tired of their own writing? That's wild. <laughs> he goes, you are goddesses. You are everywhere. You know all things. Who were the captains of Achaea? Who were the kings? The mass of troops I could never tally, never name, not even if I had ten tongues and ten mouths, a tireless voice and heart inside me bronze. Never, unless you, muses of Olympus, daughters of Zeus, whose shield is rolling thunder, sing, sing in memory of all who gathered under Troy. Now I can only tell the lords of the ships, the ships in all their numbers. So, a narrator. <laughs> Like, the guy who wrote this, or is performing this, is asking the gods to help him with the next part, because it's so tricky. And it goes on. They mention Ajax, little Ajax, Nestor, Ajax. Agamemnon and Menelaus. 
Oh, Her uh, Hercules's son is here. <laughs> Every time you mention a cool name, the kids start screaming. Ajax, <laughs> yay! Hercules, yay! <laughs> <laughs> God. He's a fan. <laughs> All right, so they list, um, we're now on page 121 of the book. Okay. At the bottom. 121. Mm -hmm. That's the number. Got it. So we're going to hear about Achilles, just a reminder. Achilles was their leader. <laughs> but the they best had of the no, Greeks. Yes, the best of the Greeks. <laughs> They have no lust for the grind of battle now. The brilliant runner Achilles lay among his ships, raging over Briseis, the girl with the lustrous hair. Ooh. All for Briseis, his heart was breaking now. Achilles lay there now, but he would soon rise up in all his power. Um. Skip. Bottom of 124. Now the Trojans. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> oh my god all right so um the trojans are coming out of the gates they're also ready to go to war hector is there uh hector with the helmet flashing his helmet is a big thing of the trojans and what you know it goes from the greeks to the trojans which is great because the next chapter is actually going to happen in the trojans point of view Oh, really? um, we get to meet Helen in person, and um, that's exciting. We kind of get the other side. Yeah. But that is it. That's all we need. <laughs> oh. I swear it's just a list. I mean. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. yeah I'm, good. I'm good on the list. Yeah, oh, I mean, it's it. it. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you want, like, a piece? Because it's, like. Not really. Yeah, it's just a list. <laughs> like, I'm sure it's cool. I'm sure maybe this information will be useful, but I'm good. It won't. The reason why it existed is because, A, to give scope of how mm. big this army was. Like, mm -hmm. it just goes on and on and on, like, just endless people. But mm. B, because, um, like, wherever these, this traveling bard went, the guy who was performing the Iliad, wherever he mm. went, one of those cities is close enough to where he is. So uh, basically it's like, um, <laughs> kind of like when the rock stars are like, how we doing tonight, Chicago? And they're like, oh, Chicago. Yeah, it's like shout outs. It's like yeah. shout out to my homies. <laughs> yeah. But like, there's a great like, hero from every city in Greece. So he uh, goes through every city and he lists the heroes that are from that city just to make oh people who are listening to him be like, yes. Like, that's me. Oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> that's really funny. It's more or less oh, I like it. I like it. We're done. That's it. There's a lot of, a lot of juiciness in yeah. these stories. That makes me very happy. I, just, I, I like it a lot so far. I'm glad. I can't handle the narrator just smack talking all these poor little boys. Yeah, it's like, bro, you made these characters. Why are you roasting them? Literally. Why are you doing this? So I mean, you just made up this one guy and you just tore him to pieces. You're like, he's got a pointy head and he's a stupid <laughs> idiot. He and nobody dumb. likes him. Achilles doesn't no like him. Odysseus hates him. Everybody <laughs> hates him. He's stupid. And then, so and then Odysseus hit him, and he was like yelling like an idiot. Yeah. Like, wow, I'm a stupid idiot. <laughs> I'm a stupid idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't no. think he looks back. At least he doesn't like importantly. But yeah, and like Achilles wasn't even in the room, and the narrator was like, Achilles hates this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was not relevant at all. <laughs> like, just in case any of you guys like Achilles, this guy is this not Achilles' guy. friend. So you gotta dislike this guy. <laughs> Dude, honestly, I would love to like go back in time, meet Homer, be like, so wait, who is this guy? <laughs> I'm like, out. I'll be like, oh yeah, that guy sucks. I'm gonna like agree with Homer. <laughs> like, ooh, he's ugly. Ooh, he's, like, he's, he's, he's like the lemon grab of Greece. Literally. That's, that's what I imagine him to be. Yeah. <laughs> wait, where are his lines again? We need to read him with that voice. It is acceptable. <laughs> If I fight, uh, I feel like my neighbors won't let me talk like that right now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they won't let you. They won't let me. <laughs> They're like, Murato-san, Murato-san. No. <laughs> Murato-san, it's very, very, very loud, please. Don't wait, why are they mad? <laughs> it's like, are you doing a Turkish thing? <laughs> my, my brain's all over. Um, Murato-san, raudodes. Raudodes. It starts on 106, if you want to get yelled at by your neighbors. Let's get yelled at. You fools! Oh, wait, no, that's not him. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still moaning and groaning? Um, Wait, yes. 106, that one? Yeah. Still moaning and groaning. My Tia Treaties, why now? Why are you panting after now? Your shelter's packed with the lion's share of bronze. Play it <laughs> too. Crowding your lodge is best of the lot. The beauties we hand you first. <laughs> Whenever we take some stronghold, or still more gold you're wanting, <laughs> some a son of the stallion breaking Trojans might just fetch from Troy. Okay, I don't want, I don't want to piss off my neighbors too much. <laughs> wow, you're so good at it, I hate it. <laughs> uh, I've been watching Adventure Time lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell. There's only one way you can get so good at a lemon grab. Oh my god, yeah, I think I'll watch Love and Grab to sleep. <laughs> One of the best characters. I love when he gets fat. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that how he ate his clone? He eats his clone, but doesn't like for <laughs> months. He just is in him. Like, I don't know how he got fat because he doesn't digest anything he eats. He's just lemon. <laughs> Either way, either way. Dude, all of the Iliad, but they're all Adventure Time characters. That'd be badass. Wow. That's a good idea. That's Nick a good is Achilles. Jake is the other guy. Wait, yeah, you can totally imagine Jake being Agamemnon, and it's like one of those things where, where, where Finn's like, dude, why are you taking my girl? <laughs> why are you doing that? And Jake's like, don't care. And, and Jake's like, I don't know. I just sort of felt like it. <laughs> like, I'm just and feeling Anyway, and he gets big and he's like, and anyway, I can have yeah, anyone yeah. I want. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> this is the most petty, unnecessary argument. No one's actually mad. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh, man. Actually, that'd, that'd be fun. And Patrick Lee's is Fern. Oh, okay. Actually, what if I think Ice King is Agamemnon? I can vibe with yeah, that. Yeah, I can yeah, vibe yeah, with yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, way better. I mean, Ice King also gives me the other guy vibe, the Tetrides or Tetrides. <laughs> He's <so laughs> important though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Tetris is definitely lemon grab. There's no nothing around that. Yeah. yeah. That's the one thing that everyone <laughs> agrees to hate. Like, there's no salvaging. God. Who's, Who's Helen? Helen? Who's Helen? Helen? Probably. Helen of Troy. Bubble gum. What? Probably Princess Bubblegum. No. Here's oh. the idea. Lumpy oh. Space Princess. Oh my. Yes! <laughs> oh my. <laughs> like, oh. oh my god. Oh, oh my god. god. Athena. <laughs> Athena. I'm so pretty. <laughs> I'm so pretty. Like, I can't deal with this at all. <laughs> I want a thousand chefs. <laughs> I'm the hottest girl in all of space. Virus is my yeah. boyfriend now. Virus <laughs> <laughs> is my Wait. boyfriend now. It's like, is Adventure Time characters all based on Iliad characters? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the code. Maybe that was the subplot that was going on the whole time. I sincerely hope so, because it seems like this casting is going very well. Oh, yeah, Zeus could be Magic Man. I was going to say he could also be Abraham Lincoln. Oh, that's all. But Abraham is, like, a bit more just. Zeus is a piece of shit. Is Zeus yeah, it's true. King of yeah, Zeus might be Glob. I don't know. <laughs> Why is Abraham Lincoln King of Mars? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, he's that's... Mars. He should be Aries. Oh, that's facts. Hmm. Yes. And I guess Glob is Cronus. 
Yeah. I think it doesn't really show up in this one. Yeah. But. I want to see them. Cro- is, is, I want Cronus action, but where can I get Cronus? Uh, just where, where like. Can I do like one Cronus? Myths. Regular myths. I, I also really like how they keep reminding us that Zeus is Cronus's son. Yeah, like, I, I, think, I, I think that, uh, Epitaph. um, they was it? Epitaph? Yeah, Epitaph? yeah. That it's like a title. So Achilles oh. is Swift Runner or Best of the Greeks, and uh-huh. um, Hector is Breaker of Horses, stuff uh-huh. like that. Gray eyed Athena, White Armed Hera. And so oh, Zeus, son of Cronus, Zeus, King of the Gods, Zeus oh. with a shield of thunder stuff like uh, that yeah I see. they just gotta say that yeah it's like i don't know it's like hard to explain why it's always yeah. there because it's not super yeah. necessary but it's just like because yeah. yeah, i yeah. want to say like you know when you say zeus i'm like oh i wonder which zeus he means like bro how many <laughs> zeus is i think it's more like uh her majesty queen elizabeth you know oh i see yeah. Also, being a son of Cronus is like a big deal. I mean, yes, it is actually. Like, <laughs> yeah, it seems like a pretty big deal to me. Pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty, <laughs> who is this Cronus guy everyone's talking about? What's his deal? How do we get uh, what's his face in on this? Jack? Jake? Jack? No, the, the guy who made Adventure Time. Oh, Muto? Adam Muto or Muto? I think we just need to um, get a million views and subscribes and likes, and then he'll eventually become aware of us. Yeah, did you yeah. hear that, fellas? We're recording, right? Like, fellas. comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Bike, comment, Slap and... the, 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 the bell button. The bell button. Slap Marat. Slap the bell button. Get him. Check quick. Get him. Get him. He's all the way in Japan. He's hard to get. Yeah, get me. But it's worth it, I swear. Get me. <laughs> get us on Adventure Time. <laughs> get us on Adventure Time. I know it's over, it's but it over. doesn't have to be. Reunion tour specifically about this. Yeah. Get us on a special HBO. <laughs> Yo, actually, Hell yes. 